Let's take a breath together. These flowers were left over from the memorial service that was held here on Friday for our beloved Sandy Gibbons. So it's a nice reminder just to see them here with us this morning. It's a new year, a new day, a new way. And we have a new theme for the year. We're doing a whole year, 12 months. You want to know what it is? Yes. Dwelling in the land of plenty. Woo! Dwelling in the land of plenty. Let's breathe that in. Dwelling in the land of plenty. And if you want to be really hip, you can say dwelling in the LOP. <laughs> but dwelling in the land of plenty. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> but at any rate, <laughs> um, what was I going to say? <laughs> the land of plenty has been defined as an imagined or utopian place where there's an abundance of everything needed to survive and flourish. The land of plenty has been defined as an imagined and utopian place where everything, where there's an abundance of everything needed to survive and flourish. I'm saying to you that the land is our consciousness. So it's not a utopian place. It's not an imagined place. The land is our consciousness. We, 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 in our consciousness, we can allow it to be a place where there's an abundance of everything needed for us to not only survive, but to thrive and flourish. And so this year, we're going to be looking at ways throughout the year of developing our consciousness to the point that we are dwelling. We are dwelling in the land of plenty. We are dwelling in the land of plenty. We are setting up residence there in the land of plenty. We're not going to just drop in every now and then or stop by when we think about it. We want to set up camp there, live there, be there, spend all our time there. Don't even have to think about it. We aren't going to be like snowbirds, (laughs) you know, go away sometimes and come back sometimes. We aren't going to let, we won't be affected by the weather and outer circumstances. We're going to be grounded in consciousness, and we're going to do those things that keep us in a place of dwelling, a place of dwelling in the consciousness of dwelling in the land of plenty. Everybody up for that? I think the kids say down for that, don't they? Everybody (laughs) down for that? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) That's not the term I use. (laughs) But at any rate, are you guys down for that? So we're going to be dwelling in the land of plenty all year. And what we're going to be doing is looking at ways to deepen our consciousness, not only our individual consciousness, but but the consciousness of the community so that we are all thriving this year, so that we are all having all needs met this year, so that we are all dealing with abundance and prosperity and living the lives that we were created to live this year. And so we will be doing that through the principles and practices of science of mind and through our spiritual practice. You know, we already started with the treatment for supply that we've been doing uh, every day, haven't we? Yes. Yes, that we've been doing uh, every day, sometimes twice a day. We certainly do it once a week when we come here. I'm trusting that you're doing it more often than that. But I have heard so many stories. I've gotten so much feedback from many of you about the results you're beginning to see from doing that treatment for supply, and as I've said over and over again, it isn't just for uh, material things, it is for just well-being, so many things, so many changes for every aspect of our lives that treatment touches on everything. And so we've already started to deepen in consciousness so that we can be done with that idea of lack and limitation once and for all. Once and for all, we'll be done with that, that idea of lack and limitation that we get caught up in sometimes. 
And so in addition to the treatment for supply, we're gonna be rolling out at the end of the month the 4T Prosperity class. Yeah, and that's a class that I'm inviting all of you to take. I'm inviting the entire community to take so that we can all move into that consciousness of prosperity and, and growth and abundance and expansion and so that we can really be done and move forward and grow and expand in this community. So the class is for the community. And it, it, it's a 12-week class, as we told you during the congregational, um, congregational meeting. And we'll talk a little bit more about it later, but our board is gonna be taking it. We had a board retreat yesterday and all of them are gonna be taking the, the class also. So I invite you all to join us. Meanwhile, we are going to be doing things here on Sundays and talking about and delving into uh, topics and things that, that really help us to release those things that would block and open up so that we can expand in consciousness and dwell and dwell in the land of plenty. The theme for the month of January is outrageous abundance. Outrageous abundance. Not just abundance, outrageous abundance. Yeah. Outrageous. Can you imagine outrageous abundance? Okay, <laughs> got a talkative group this morning. So, <laughs> outrageous abundance, where we are, you know, outrageous being outrageous is being bold. That the, one of the definitions of outrageous is startling. Wouldn't you like to have startling abundance in your life? Yeah, startling abundance. And so outrageous abundance is what we're gonna be looking at throughout the month. We'll be talking about that and seeing how we can express and experience more and more outrageous. And you just don't say outrageous, you say outrageous. Outrageous, outrageous abundance. <laughs> outrageous abundance is what we're gonna be having and experiencing in our lives. And so for today, we're talking about, about abundance and prosperity being an inside job. Because you know there are times when abundance and prosperity are terms that are used interchangeably. There's a difference. Abundance is, is being, in the in, uh, being in the flow of good in our lives. I mean, I'm sorry, prosperity is being in the flow of good in our lives. The good that flows in, the go in and through our lives, that's prosperity. Good health, wealth, good friends, peace, harmony, balance, experiencing a closer relationship with God. All these things are, 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 are considered to be prosperity the things that flow in, the good that flows in our lives. Abundance is more of a quantity, a quantitative quality. It's more, abundance is defined as a profusion of good in our lives. I love that word profusion. A profusion of good in our lives. That means a lot of good in our lives. That's what abundance is. And abundance is measured not by what flows in, but what flows over. Abundance is measured by, not by what flows in, but what flows over. And so where we want to live our lives is in that overflow. That overflow. Yes, we appreciate that which flows in. That which flows in, when there's enough flowing in, that's called sufficiency. When we have so much flows, flowing in that it flows over, that's called abundance. And the more that flows over, the more abundance we have and the more outrageous it becomes. And then we have enough to spare and to share, enough to give, enough to do whatever we want, to live however we want to live without being concerned about anything. We do that by one thing, allowing our consciousness to become a dwelling place for God. Allowing our consciousness to become a dwelling place for God. Yes, we want to dwell in the land of plenty, and we can dwell in the land of plenty when our consciousness is a dwelling place for God. When, we, when it's a dwelling place for God, we are, are at one with the all that is. We are at one with prosperity. We are at one with abundance. We are at one with all these things because they're spiritual qualities. They're God qualities. And so when, the more we live our lives in a way that we are at one with them, then that's when when that consciousness, our consciousness becomes that dwelling place for God and that's when we get to really dwell in the land of plenty. One of the ways that we allow that consciousness of ours to become a dwelling place is by living 
the principles of prosperity. Living the principles of prosperity. The principles of prosperity. First principle, prayer and meditation. Prayer and meditation. They should sound familiar as I go through them because there are seven sacred practices here. <laughs> prayer and meditation. First principles of prosperity. When we are constantly doing our spiritual work, constantly doing our prayer work, constantly doing our meditation work, we are deepening in consciousness. We are opening ourselves up more and more. We are moving more and more into alignment with the all that is. Our consciousness can't help but be a dwelling place for God when we are connecting with God always. The second prosperity principle is purification and elimination. We'll be talking about that as we go through the month, but letting go of those things that don't serve, releasing clutter of all kinds, of all kinds, and we have all kinds of clutter in our lives, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> we do a lot of it. And so what this physical or mental or emotional or spiritual or whatever kind of clutter, that's a part of the purification and elimination process that we go through when, when we are really looking at how we can clear our consciousness to be a dwelling place for God. The third of the prosperity principles is forgiveness and release. We talked about forgiveness a little bit last week. We talk about forgiveness all the time. We need to talk about forgiveness every day. How many people have their white stones from last week? How many people are using them? Good. How many people let them serve as reminders? It's not too late. You can pull them out at any time and let it remind you of the commitment you made, the sacred commitment you made last week to practice forgiveness daily. Practice forgiveness daily. When we can practice forgiveness daily, we release and let go of that stuff that we hold on to that would, 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 would block our consciousness from being that dwelling place for God. And so forgiveness and release, very, very important, something we do every day, something we do every day. And then the next principle is tithing, tithing. Let's take a breath, tithing. <laughs> Sometimes when you mention tithing, people <gasps> hold their breath. We want to take a breath and just open up and be willing to give back, be willing to give more and more and more and more and more. Because you know what? We cannot outgive God. We cannot outgive God. I can remember a song from my childhood hearing at my mother's church and my father's church and singing, you can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. And that's true. And so we can tithe easily and, with the, with, with, and fearlessly because tithing creates fear for some people. It creates a little anxiety. It creates a, am I going to have enough? Or maybe I don't have enough to tithe or whatever. But we'll learn as we, go through the, as we go through the month, as we go through the 4T Prosperity class, which is the class for tithing of time, talent, and treasure. But we'll learn that that's a prosperity principle, and it keeps us in the flow. It keeps us in the flow, and it is one of our seven sacred practices here of tithing. And then the last one that we're going to talk about is that we're looking at as a prosperity principle is gratitude. Just being so grateful for everything. Being so grateful, living in that, that air of gratitude. Living in that consciousness of gratitude. Living in, in a place where we're looking for something to be grateful for. And we're remind about, reminding ourselves always of the things that we have to be grateful for. And so when we are looking at the, the first way of being in a place of dwelling in the land of plenty, allowing our consciousness to be a dwelling place for God, we start to live the principles of prosperity, those that I just enumerated for you. We start to live those principles. Second thing we want to do is to release those things that would block. Release those things that would block, one of the first of which is fear, as I was talking about with tithing. But fear comes up, particularly when we start talking about prosperity and abundance. Prosperity and abundance, when we start talking about 
having enough, having more than enough, being in the overflow, sometimes that creates fear because we always, there's always something that's telling us we don't have enough or somebody telling us we don't have enough or turning on the TV and having them tell us we don't have enough or all kinds of things. There's, a, there's not enough to go around, but there is. There is. There's more than enough to go around. And we want to stay in that overflow consciousness. We want to stay in that consciousness of abundance because when we are in a consciousness of abundance, it raises our vibration. And the more we can think about abundance and, and, and see abundance and experience abundance, the more abundance comes in. It's funny how that works. More and more comes in as we experience more, as we think about it more, as we, as we open to it more, more and more comes in. And the thing for us to realize is that we don't have to create abundance and prosperity. We don't have to create it. It already is. All we have to do is reveal it. But we can't reveal it if we aren't open to it. If there's no opening for it to be revealed through us, then it can't be, we can't experience it in our lives because we can only experience that which we have a consciousness for. And so that's why it's so important for us to continue to work on deepening consciousness, continue to work on, on having the consciousness of what it is we desire. Because whether we like it or not, we're going to have the consciousness, we're going to have the experience of whatever it is we have the consciousness for. And so we may as well have the consciousness of what we desire and do those things that, do whatever it takes for us to have that consciousness. And so that's what we're going to be doing as we continue to go through this time of dwelling in the land of plenty and to looking at how we, how we experience outrageous abundance in our experience. Leaning on God, re relying on God, being at one with, moving into alignment with God always, always in everything we do, always. And letting go of that stuff that would block us from being in alignment. Letting go of that stuff that would block us from being in alignment. The third thing is, let your I can'ts become God can. Let your I can'ts become God can. I'll say it again. Let your I can't become God can. Because God can. When we start, you know, when we get into the I can'ts, we're arguing for our limitations. And so I'm asking you to let go of arguing for limitations. Have you ever talked to somebody and started telling them what they can do and they start telling you all the reasons they can't? Yeah. All the reasons they can't. You know, that's how fear does. We do that. When we think of something new that we need to do or something we want to do or whatever, we start the first think about why we can't do it. We have to train ourselves to start to think differently. We have to train ourselves to start off with God can. That's the starting point. God can. I can because I am. I can because God is. And when we look at our oneness with God, then we know that any time I say, I can, I know this God can. Because God can do everything, and that's, what we, that's where we have to be. That's where we have to be. You know, we hold the key to riches and to lack. It's the same key. We hold the key to riches and we hold the key to lack. It's the same key. Same key. Think about it. So think about what you're thinking. Think about what you're saying. Think about how you're acting. Think about what you're believing. Think about how you're moving through the world. Think about who your associates are. Think about the conversations you're having. Think about how you're using the I am, the most powerful creative words in our, in, in our vo vocabulary, the I am. Anything you put behind I am is creative. I am tired. I am sick. I am bored. I am wealthy. I am prosperous. I am abundant. It's up to you. It's up to you. We are the creators. And so being careful to use that, those creative words, I am, in a way that's really creating what we want to experience in our lives is so, so, so important. That's when we get into the God cans. 
because when we start talking about I am and we are really speaking the truth about what I am, then that's when God, that's when God kicks in. Because once we start speaking the truth and once we are opening up to that, then there's an opening for God to work. There's an opening for God to work. So recognize that you have the key. You have the key to riches and you have the key to lack. Remember that prosperity is more than just money and things. And poverty is more than just a lack of money and things. Prosperity is more than just money and things. Poverty is more than just a lack of money and things. Two sides of the same coin. Two sides of the same coin. Two sides of the same coin. It's all about consciousness. It's all about our awareness that is already right here, right now, right where we are. It's all about recognizing that it's our divine birthright to have prosperity, to, 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 to reveal prosperity in our lives. It's already right where we are. And we just need to open up so that we can express it. Open up so that we can experience it. Open up so that we can share it. Open up so that we can become a prosperous community, one that is thriving, one that is growing, one that is, is expanding, one that is living fully, one that is living out loud. This is what Creative Living Fellowship is going to do. This is what we're already doing. We make a lot of noise in here on Sunday mornings. We can, <laughs> we can live out loud. I love that phrase, living out loud. Aren't you ready to live out loud? Yeah. yeah. Not just talk out loud. Aren't you ready to live out loud? <laughs> Aren't you ready to do that? I am. And that's what we do when we start looking at outrageous abundance. You know what? This community, I am, I've been telling you guys about us visioning and how we vision every week and, and all that. This community is just on the verge of explosive growth, explosive expansion. Come along. Be a part of it. Be a space for to, to grow and expand through you because it can only happen through each of us. It can only happen through each of us. We can't make it happen. We can just open up and allow allow God to be God through each of us. When we can allow God to be God, that is powerful. That's all we need to do, allow God to be God in and through and as my life. Allow God to be God in and through and as your life. Because God is gonna show up according to your own uniqueness. God is gonna show up according to my own uniqueness. And so if I'm open, wow. Who knows how God's gonna show up? If you're open, who knows how God's going to show up? I just always say, fasten your seatbelts <laughs> and go along for the ride. Because we have a wonderful opportunity here to live our best lives. We have a wonderful opportunity here to live out loud. We have a wonderful opportunity here to be as big as we want or as small as we want. It's all up to you. You hold the key. You can take as many breaths as you want, and there will not be an inexhaustible supply of air. I mean, an inexhaustible supply of air. There is an inexhaustible supply. So you don't have to sit here and hold your breath. You can breathe as often as you want, whether I tell you to or not. <laughs> and you can keep breathing, because when you breathe, you're not taking any air from me. That's enough to go around for everybody. That's an outrageous abundance of air, right? Yes. All of us in this room can breathe as many times as we want to, and it won't take anything from anybody else. Everybody on this planet can breathe as many times as they want to. If we just start to think about that, and think about air being outrageously abundant, think about all the other things in our lives that are outrageously abundant. And so I'm inviting you today to Allow your consciousness to be a dwelling place for God. To release those things that would block anything that, 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 anything that would block your, being, your consciousness being that dwelling place for God. And then turning your I can't into God can. Turning your I can't into God can. And knowing that there's so much more than we know. 
There's so much more than we've experienced. There's so much more than we can ever, ever experience. All we have to do is just open up and just try. Open up and expectantly, expectantly set our intention to experience as much of the goodness of God as we can fully and freely because it's ours by divine birthright. It's ours by divine birthright. God has already made the gift. God is the gift. God is not going to give us anything else. God gave it all at the very beginning and before the beginning. And all we need to do is open up and say yes. And so I invite you now to say yes. 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 Take a breath and just say yes. 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 You don't have to say it loud. Just take a breath and say yes. Mm -hmm. Let that be your mantra as you leave this place this day. Take a breath and say yes. And what we're doing is saying yes to God. And when we say yes to God, we're saying yes to everything. Because God is all there is. And so let's turn within now for prayer. And so I stand here in the knowing right now that God is all there is. The only power, the only presence, the only mind, the only life. The only activity, the only breath is God. God is all there is. All there is. And this allness that is God is my very life. This allness that is God is the life of each of us here this day. This is all we ever need to know. So God is all there is and God is my life and God is all there is and God is my life. There's nothing that can separate me from it. There's nothing that can separate any of us from it. So we rest in this knowing. And as we do this, all of the abundance, all of the prosperity, all the health, all the friends and the love and the harmony and the balance and the joy and the peace and the peace of mind. All of it is right here, right now, right where we are. We open up to experience it. We open up to express it. We allow the allness and the fullness of God to express through each of us. If there are any blocks that we are holding, I know that by this word being spoken, they are released and dissolved right here and right now. The blocks of fear and doubt and anger and guilt and shame and blame and all that stuff that we just hold on to sometimes. We let it go. This is a new year. This is a new day. We let it go. And we allow ourselves to be filled with the Spirit, the Spirit of God. We breathe easily. We breathe freely. how grateful I am for this opportunity to speak this word for each of us. Speaking a word of healing, any sense of separation that we may have is hereby healed by this word that's been spoken here this day. As I open this circle of prayer, I pause momentarily so that you may speak the names of anyone you'd like held in prayer. You may speak their names silently or loud, but you may speak them now. And so for all those whose names are spoken here this day, I know that God is right where they are, right where each of them is. I know that God is in the midst of every situation and circumstance. And knowing this, I, I, I speak this word for anyone on this planet needing a prayer this day. Knowing that God is right where they are right now. Thank you, Father, Mother God, for the blessings of our lives. Thank you, Father, Mother God, for allowing us to be the blessings that we are. Thank you, Father, Mother God, for everything, for 
everything. For everything. I'll just allow it to be now. And so it is. <laughs>